If you're homeschooling in high school, how do you know if you should do honors classes, AP classes, if you should have your child dual enroll in a college class while they're still in high school, or even take CLEP exams? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Hello and welcome back to our channel. I'm Colleen and this is Our Blessed Life and this is video four in my homeschooling and high school series. And today we're talking about um, different types of classes such as honors, AP, dual enrollment, and also CLEP exams. Is this something that's really going to be good for your child? So if your child struggles in school or um, anything like that, then you're obviously not going to want to put the burden of honors classes, AP classes, and all of that on them. It's just going to add stress. It's going to add stress to you and it's going to add stress to your student. And so think first, have an honest discussion with your student. Is this something you want to pursue? And have an honest um, discussion with yourself. Is this something that is really appropriate for my student? So some students that could really benefit from these types of programs would be um, students that are working above grade level, students that have a lot of kind of internal get up and go, you know, they're self-driven, they don't mind the extra work or they find it interesting, that type of thing. And if your student fits into that criteria, then one of the reasons that you may want to consider this is because it does help the GPA, it does help your transcript if they are college bound. So it does help the transcript because the class is going to be noted as honors, AP, or dual enrollment on the transcript itself. But it can also help the GPA if the grade is good in the class that's taken. So you can see here, this is from the South Carolina Uniform Grading Scale Conversion that looks at the letter grade, numerical um, grade, and then gives the weighting for that for the GPA. This should be similar in your state, but you do want to make sure that you look up your own state's um, GPA and use that. But you can see here on this one from South Carolina that compared to the average college prep weighting, an honors class has half a point higher weighting and an AP or dual enrollment credit class is going to have a whole point um, higher weighting than college prep. First, I want to talk a little bit about honors. So honors classes are usually good for ninth and 10th graders who are probably a little bit too young to be taking AP classes and um, dual enrollment, although you, you can sometimes take AP and dual enrollment in ninth and 10th grade, but the maturity level may not be there for that because AP and, um, and dual enrollment classes are college level classes. They're not high school level classes. Honors classes are advanced high school level classes. So an honors class is a really good place to start if you think your student um, can be motivated by the extra work or if you think that they are going to be able um, to handle it. For an honors class, the class is going to be considered advanced high school level. It's going to need to be harder than a college prep class and it's going to need to have more work. So typically that would be increased um, reading assignments writing assignments and presentation as well as some sort of project. Now this can look very different depend on, depending on the type of class that you are doing. And typically as a homeschool mom, it, it's going to fall on you to put together the honors project. However, I haven't found it really difficult to do. And honestly, I enjoy doing it because it, it, it allows me to do a little bit of research and kind of put something together that I really feel like is tailor-made for Katie. So this is an example of what we have done for some math projects. We have, um, I've looked online to try to find similar um, projects and sometimes I will tweak them. Sometimes I'm getting these from public school websites. Um, sometimes they even come from college websites. But we have done projects that are in the realm of statistics because she's really not getting a lot of statistics. Um, in her math, she's starting to get a little bit of that, like, um, you know, the R squared, um, some of that kind of thing, scatter plots. And so we're doing a project that allows her to be more hands on with the statistics. So we come up with a project idea, we come up with a question, then the math part of it is running the statistics, um, interpreting what those statistics mean. Sometimes there's extrapolation and interpolation. Um, within that data set and outside of that data set. 
Um, and then there's going to be a write-up of that, which is kind of looks a little bit like a science fair project with, you know, kind of your introduction and your question, your hypothesis, your results, your conclusion, and that sort of thing. Um, so that's kind of what we've done for math. Usually honors projects for math classes are going to be project-based. You sometimes could do little mini projects and do several of those and um, something that's not, not going to take very long and maybe do one a quarter, or you could do a bigger one, like the one Katie just finished doing for her honors math project, included a 10 page paper that was research, she presented that and that sort of thing. And so that is going to be her honors project for the year. She's not gonna do multiple ones, she's gonna do that. And then she will also do her pre-calculus class. Um, then for other classes, we don't put as much, um, you know, we may do additional reading, additional smaller projects, additional writing assignments, and that's kind of how I've done our, um, our history. So I've added in several books along with The Good and the Beautiful, Year One and Year Two. I've added in um, several projects, several writing assignments, additional, um, we're, I'm having her watch and discuss America, the Story of Us, um, and several other things like that, um, that's, you know, our video series. And, um, and so we're doing a lot of separate things that have been added on to get that honors credit for that course. You can also even do honors um, credit for um, elective courses. For, for instance, Katie takes dance and she's doing honors credit for her dance class. So first of all, she's got to meet the basic criteria of the hours for an elective class, which is 150 for one, a one year course. She's gonna have probably over 350 hours because of the amount of dance that she takes. I think that we had logged about 250 hours at the end of first semester. Um, and that did include some summer intensives and several performances. So I don't think she's going to end up with 500 hours, but she's definitely going to be at 350 to 450 hours for the year. So that's a significant amount above um, just the basic 150 hours for an elective. Then on top of that, she does numerous performances. That gives her the performance um, credit. I also, ha also have her um, read a book that usually has to do with ballet terminology. I do a test with her on that book um, and it's a different book every year. And then in addition to that, I will also have her do a writing assignment, which will be self-assessments at the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, and the end of the year. I have her write out those assessments. Um, what does she want to improve upon? You know, that looking at herself and then a lot of times we also will have one of her dance teachers review that and give her some some feedback on that so that's been a really helpful tool for her in dance but it also helps us to document the honors credit why is why does should it count as an honors class so i hope that's helpful in understanding the difference between a regular class which is basically usually going to be just following the curriculum as it's written um, for for a high school student versus adding an honors um, class above that. And when in doubt, I think a really good rule is going to be, it's more work, it's harder work, and it includes extra reading, writing, project, and presentation. So that's, that's kind of the way I do it. Again, that's at the advice of our accountability group. If you don't know what that is, I don't, South Carolina may be the only state that has accountability groups, but, um, they basically, the, the group that we use works with colleges. They know what colleges expect to see. And so I feel really comfortable using that criteria for honors classes. If you do not have an accountability group and that's not required in your state and you have less stringent rules, you just need to determine what you think is reasonable for an honors class and then document what you did. Again, the idea is just why is this class harder and um, more work than a regular college prep class. What has gone into that? Because theoretically, at, during the college application process, as a homeschooler, your student could be asked, why was this an honors class? I'd like to see the syllabus. Why is this not considered college prep? What extra work did you do? So I keep all of that in my record keeping, and we'll talk about record keeping um, and transcripts in future videos. Okay, I kind of want to talk about um, AP classes, um, dual enrollment, and CLEP exams for a minute as a group, and then I'll also talk about them a little bit individually. So the reason why a lot of people like to do or um, 
want their children to do AP classes, dual enrollment, or CLEP is because also, we already talked about the GPA boost that you can get, which is a little bit higher than an honors class. It also can potentially give your student credit for college while they're still in high school. These are considered college level classes. So again, we need to honestly ask ourselves, is our student ready for this? Um, is it a good time for this with our homeschool school year, what the year looks like? So for instance, if you're going to do um, an AP or a dual enrollment class, that's a class that you're not leading. You're not the teacher of that class. You're going to be enrolling your child in that class and have to keep up with that syllabus um, and all of the work on somebody else's time frame. So that's just something to be honest about. Are you going to be able to meet those demands and requirements? Um, and is your student self-motivated enough to be able to do that? Usually, um, students will do AP and dual enrollment when they are um, juniors and seniors in high school. Again, that's not across the board, but that's generally the way um, people will register for classes. AP classes are not classes that you can teach yourself. These are classes that have already been pre-approved um, by the College Board and deemed as AP. As a homeschooler, you could do this um, through online classes. You may have some um, classes in your area that are, that are regular physical classes that your student could attend um, that have already been approved for AP, and that would be the way that you would take those classes. Now, the point of an AP class really is to challenge the student to, to do more advanced work, college level work, while still in high school, and get them ready for the AP exam. So you will have to go ahead and order the AP exam, usually by November of the school year. So you're gonna to need to know in advance that you're doing this. Now your student does not have to take an AP class in order to take the AP exam for that subject. You could still take the class, you could still, um, you could take the class and not take the exam and you could also take the exam and pass it and actually get um, you know, make a note on the transcript that your student did pass the AP exam for whatever the subject is. Um, passing the AP exam is what gives you potential college credit. Now, I say potential college credit because all colleges don't accept AP exams um, as college credit. They may accept certain classes and not other classes, or they may have a policy where they don't accept any classes because they want you to pay and take the classes that they, they have. Dual enrollment is when you take a college class while you're still in high school and you get high school and college credit simultaneously. Usually, you're given one year of high school credit for a one semester college class. It can save money on college costs possibly. It can also give a GPA boost provided that the grade is good and it looks good on the transcript. However, with dual enrollment, we have a similar problem that we have with AP where some colleges won't accept it depending on where the student is trying to go. Also, some colleges and universities will treat dual enrollment classes as electives rather than core classes like math and English and classes like that, depending on what the class was that was taken by the student and depending on the major and the school that the student is trying to go to. What I would recommend if you're planning on doing AP, CLEP, or dual enrollment is first go to the school that you think it's reasonable that your child would apply to or several schools that you think it's reasonable that your student would apply to and determine what their policy is for AP, CLEP, and dual enrollment before you make a decision on pursuing these options because again not every school is going to accept these at all and then they may only accept certain subjects. Also, it's possible that your child could do really well on an AP exam on something like a U.S. history only to find that that is not something that they need to take for the major that they choose in, in college. So it doesn't really help them in terms of getting college credit unless they use it as an elective um, or something like that. However, even if you don't get college credit for these, you're still, for your AP classes and dual enrollment classes, you still will get the GPA bump and um, also it looks good on a transcript to show that you did dual enrollment classes or AP. CLEP stands for College Level Examination Program. And basically what it is, is it's a system of tests that a student can take on various different subjects. And if they pass that exam for uh, whatever the subject is, 
they may be given college credit. So CLEP, CLEP exams, taking CLEP exams would be helpful for two reasons. One, um, you possibly could get college credit for, take, for just taking a test. Um, and two, it is some, it, it's a way that you can help your student learn to study and have good study skills for test taking in the future in college. Um, so for CLEP, there's not a class that you're going to take necessarily. It's just once you feel like your student has had enough of whatever that subject matter is, um, they're going to take the exam. You're going to sign up and uh, pay for it. It's $80 to $85 per exam. And assuming that you do get that college credit, then that was a very inexpensive way to accumulate those credits. But again, many schools do not recognize them or accept them, or they have limits on how many you can do or what classes that they will accept. Um, so that is something to definitely to consider before you go down that road taking all of the CLEP exams and then find out that you really can't use them. Um, so that's just something to definitely be aware of. However, many students have been successful in taking these exams and using these credits. When you're taking a CLEP exam, the other thing that would, um, would be a good idea would be to get the test uh, preparation booklets. Um, you can just Google search um, CLEP exam. You can find materials that have been prepared um, for the different subjects for the examinations. And they have sample tests and things like that that your child can study before going and taking the exam, and that would be very helpful. So I hope that I have helped you learn a little bit more about um, honors classes, AP classes, dual enrollment classes, and the CLEP exam process for your high school student. If you have any specific questions, please leave those in the comments below. If you have any other topics that you'd like me to talk about with regards to homeschooling in high school, let me know that in the comments below as well. I have two more videos in this series that I'm planning to make right now. Um, the next one will be on um, grading in high school, and then my last video that I have planned right now will be on transcripts um, and record keeping in high school. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.